Jason is helping to provide care to his father, who recently experienced a stroke. After a few weeks in the hospital, Jason's father was discharged to go home. His father's working to regain many of his physical abilities, but is continuing to struggle with regaining his communication skills. Jason and his father are keen to know what else they can do to improve his speech and language. A stroke happens when blood stops flowing to any part of the brain. This interruption causes damage to the surrounding brain cells, which cannot be repaired or replaced. 1.9 million brain cells die every minute during a stroke. Every year in Canada, there are more than 62,000 strokes, with more than 405,000 people in Canada living with the aftereffects of a stroke. After a stroke, depending on the area of the brain affected, various communication problems may occur. Common communication difficulties include creating sentences, using incorrect words, repeating words or sentences, misunderstanding others, the inability to read and write, or slurred speech. Typical communication difficulties are often referred to in two categories. Aphasia, a term given to problems with language expression or comprehension, and dysarthria, a term given to problems with muscles used for speech, which may cause slurred speech or slow speech. We've asked Dr. Wes Eskowski to talk about regaining language after stroke and what the research says about speech-language therapy. Dr. Eskowski is a professor of medicine at McMaster University and the Neurology Division Director. Thank you so much for joining us today, uh, Dr. Eskowski. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. So uh, let's start with, the, can you just talk about how strokes may affect communication? So one of the, the most common uh, serious neurological problem is actually stroke. So it affects uh, many individuals uh, uh, in the country. It's more common when you're older, but it can affect younger and older people. Uh, the brain is, um, is divided into specific uh, parts that do specific things. And in human beings, most people, uh, their language centers, their ability to understand and their ability to express themselves is situated in the left side of the brain. And depending on what type of stroke someone has and what part of the brain it involves, it may involve their language centers. So in other words, uh, including some weakness or some numbness or problems with other parts of the brain function, a person may have a language disturbance. And that happens quite commonly. Uh, probably in half of everybody who has a stroke, they will have some language disturbance. And those will be very obvious in terms of being able to express yourself or being able to understand. What are some of the treatment approaches for communication challenges after stroke? Treating language problems or aphasia is um, very challenging. It's much more obvious when we see somebody who's had a stroke who has a weakness involved in an arm or a leg where you can actually manipulate the arm and the leg and see how it moves and how it recovers. Language, the ability to understand, the ability to express yourself is very complex. And that you can't, the person helping someone with a language problem can't actually see the problem directly. They have to be able to um, assess its, the difficulties by um, listening to the individual, getting the individual to try to talk, to test the individual, how they understand. Um, and those things are more challenging than dealing with what I would consider is much more a simple weakness problem after a stroke. The first step in dealing with um, a language problem or aphasia after stroke is to understand what the problem is. And the Injury to the brain in everybody will be slightly different and how somebody has and what kind of problems they have will be different from person to person. The first step the therapist needs to understand is to do an analysis, an understanding of is the problem difficulty understanding what somebody says? Is the problem difficulty with expressing yourself? Is the problem more um, 
specific, such as being able to write? Or is the problem more specific, being able to read? Those are also language functions as well. So the first step a therapist does is to identify what the problem is, to be able to then to say, this is what we're going to work on. We're going to work on your ability to express yourself. Is the ability to express yourself a, a difficulty with finding words, finding sentences, controlling your mouth or your tongue? Or is it ability to un, difficulty in understanding? So it is an ability to understand people talking, more than one person talking to you. Is it difficulty understanding written language or is it just verbal language? So the first step in any type of approach to helping somebody with aphasia is to understand exactly what the problems are. And, and would that assessment typically be done by uh, a speech language pathologist or a speech language therapist, or are there other um, types of therapists that would be involved in that type of assessment? So the primary assessment, the detailed assessment, would be by a speech language therapist. That those are the individuals who have trained and are skilled in in doing that. Um, speech language uh, therapists have assistants that can actually help them once they understand what the difficulty is, and once they have a therapeutic plan. Once the therapeutic plan is in place, there's sometimes assistance, and assistance can actually include trained family members and or other individuals who work with the, with the patient themselves to then work on their, their treatment plan. And, and when would that type of assessment typically happen? Would it happen, you know, within a short period of time after a stroke, uh, if somebody's still in hospital, or does it usually, is there usually a waiting period around that type of assessment? Um, the assessment, uh, speech language therapists are involved virtually from day one when somebody comes in and has a stroke. Uh, they, for example, one of the things that they do early on, even before assessing language problems, one of the things that often uh, happens at the same time as, as a language problem is a swallowing problem, which includes the mouth and the throat. So uh, as part of the best practices in stroke care, speech language therapists assess every individual who comes into the hospital for swallowing difficulties. That has to be the priority to prevent problems, complications such as developing pneumonia from swallowing the wrong way and getting food into your lungs. Immediately within the first few days after a stroke, a speech language therapist will do that assessment, that evaluation to help all the other team members understand what language problems your patient may have. All the other team members who are working with the patient in doing their daily care, helping them mobilize, helping them uh, dress themselves, take care of themselves, need to understand what language problems the person may have that they don't understand when you say something to them or that they have difficulty expressing their needs and their, and their wants. So a speech language therapist is instrumental in the first few days in identifying if there is an aphasia, a language problem, and what the problems are so that the rest of the team and the family can engage appropriately with the person. What exactly does a speech language therapist do for people recovering from a stroke? So a speech language therapist um, provides one-on-one -on -one, uh, therapy. So in other words, the patient and the speech language therapist sit together and are engaged on a one-to-one -one approach. And as I said earlier, the first step is the speech therapist does testing. And the testing is to look at what is the problem. Is my patient with me? Are they having difficulty manipulating their tongue and their mouth, and it's a problem with slurred speech or something called dysarthria. Or when I test them, are they having difficulty understanding what I'm asking them? Are they having difficulty understanding words or sentences or complex ideas? On the other side, does the person have difficulty expressing simple words, complex sentences or complex thoughts. First step is to sit on a one-to-one -one basis and to identify what the problems are. Then the next step is on a regular basis, 
And this is with as much intensity as appropriate. The therapist addresses those specific problems. So for example, if it's comprehension or understanding or expression or talking, and the therapist will engage the individual in trying to enhance their ability to do those things correctly or understand things correctly. They will start with simple approaches and build on those on a regular basis into complex therapies. Complex, for example, um, saying more complex words or complex sentences, being able to understand simple, simple words or, simp or complex sentences. The therapist does that on a regular basis. The recommendation is, is actually quite intensive therapy, an hour every day, five days a week to start after a stroke for up to the first four to six weeks would be the recommendation by the best practice guidelines. And is it also the case that it's it's sort of not only intense, but uh, the sooner the better. You mentioned the the speech language therapist getting to do the swallowing assessment up front, but is it also recommended that the speech language therapy for supporting language would also be early and often? Yes, we believe so. Uh, the reason we believe so is that, for example, um, most of the um, the literature or the science of recovery after a stroke is based on recovery of arm and leg power and function, because again, it's a much simpler, easier to see how things improve. And when we intervene, we see how they respond. Language, um, there is no reason to think that language did not behave the same way. So recovery from language. When somebody has a stroke, there will be the early day or two where the brain will automatically, there'll be a healing, an early healing. But then after that, we know that the bulk of the recovery of function and the bulk of the ability to intervene in helping recovery of function overall in stroke is within the first three months. Therefore, if we're going to make a big difference in enhancing recovery, that needs to occur early, first few days, first few weeks, and the first few months. Having said that, though, there was, a, there was a theory in the past that, in fact, if someone had a, a language problem that was still there at six months, or if it was there still at one year, that was what they were going to have forever. That's not true. The recovery we see happens very rapidly over the first three to six months. That's the time to intervene as aggressively as possible to help, help it recover in a better way, in a more profound way. However, we also know that ongoing therapy and ongoing practice by the patient themselves will continue to show recovery more than a year out, even two years out, even three years out for such complex brain functions such as language. You mentioned some of the research and evidence. Uh, there's maybe more evidence around some of the motor recovery, but um, can you talk about some of the research evidence on, that supports the use of uh, speech language therapy uh, as a post-stroke uh, communication recovery tool? So there, so people have done um, research studies or things called trials or scientific experiments where they look at providing people with speech language therapy at a certain intensity or much more or much less, looking at providing the therapy early on or later on, providing the therapy in a targeted way, one way or in a different way. And overall, when you look at the totality, the bulk of all this scientific research, it's very clear and I think there would be no debate that if you provide speech therapy and you get a speech language therapist involved with someone after a stroke, they do better than someone who you leave on their own and hope that they will improve. It's also very clear from looking at the speech recovery therapy um, after a stroke and all the other therapies that we, inter we introduce for recovery after a stroke that applying that early makes a difference compared to applying that late. 
how would you approach uh, uh, helping out uh, Jason and his father with respect to his communication recovery after stroke? So it's um, it's not unusual that um, there are many, a stroke can affect many functions that somebody has. Uh, for example, uh, being able to walk, being able to use your arm or your hand. And what we're talking about today is being able to communicate, to use your language effectively. Um, Early on after a stroke, uh, what people see as priorities for themselves and what families see can be very different. So that very early after a stroke, the priority may be actually getting up and getting out of bed and being able to walk around. The priority early on may be to use your hand and your arm and your hands and your arms to get yourself dressed and take care of yourself. But it becomes, um, then the priorities change. And I'm not surprised that in Jason's uh, dad's case that in fact, The language problem uh, comes out as a very top priority maybe later on than earlier on after all those other basic functions have have recovered and become more independent. Uh, Being able to understand, being able to communicate is so human, so an important human function, such, such an important thing that makes us us to be able to sit with your family, to be able to sit with your friends, to be able to have a discussion, to be able to enjoy people's company is important for us to be able to understand them and be able to important for us to express uh, what we are, what what our thoughts are. So what I would say to to Jason and and his family is that it's very important that one is they never give up because we do know that in the long term, even after the early rapid recovery, this continued improvement over time, that most aphasia language problems continue to get better. How do they get better? Listen to your speech language therapist, follow their directions in terms of therapy that you do specifically that they've recommended. The other part that's crucial is continued engagement, family, friends, the person with the stroke, continued encouragement to be able to express themselves, to understand, to relearn those functions that they lost after the stroke. The the thing that the brain has, um, which is like a miracle, is that even with an injured brain, it still has the capacity to learn. And it can learn what it lost. You have to be honest with yourself to a degree, but there is not... Um, an ultimate limit. And I would continue to encourage individuals to continue to practice, to engage, to work on their language problems.